What is up YouTube and welcome to this Supergirl review. So this is it, Supergirl is back. And if you're just joining us for the first time ever, please do think about hitting that subscribe and that like button if you enjoy the rest of this video because we cover all of the Arrowverse shows. Bit of housekeeping, I'm not sure if I'm able to do my Flash and Black Lightning video tomorrow because it's my birthday and I am, well, doing birthday stuff. So I'm not sure if I will be able to, but I will be, I will try because the grind never stops. So Supergirl is back and well, we see here we have a return really for Supergirl, obviously, but after the fight, she's now in some sort of mind prison thing. And, well, Brainiac appears out of nowhere to explain that, well, she is in a coma and he needs to, you know, help her get out of that coma. And, well, I'm kind of surprised we never got to see Brainiac kind of wake up and get out of the, of his kind of, I would say, tube or anything like that. We were literally just introduced to Brainiac 5 straight away, who is the descendant of Brainiac, one of Superman's greatest villains of all time. And he is, like I said, a kind of 30th, 31st century descendant. And, well, he comes from the planet um, where pretty much everyone is is kind of a descendant of the aforementioned Brainiac. So not sure what's going to happen there when we see the kind of, if we ever see Tyler Hoechlin, Superman, meet him. But they, she, well, they are in this prison and she needs to get out. And I really did like this idea that she had to kind of break free and let go and discover her human side to actually get out and fight and things like that. I thought that was really cool, really good way of doing things. And these kind of episodes can be a bit boring, but we did have the juxtaposition of the Legion of Superheroes fighting Rain. We had the DEO fight Rain and Rain well being Rain and fighting everyone. So that worked really, really well. And it's kind of similar to Barry's kind of coma or kind of weird fugue state that he was in at the first episode of this season of The Flash. So we see the Legion of Superheroes and, well, they are here. We've got three of them so far and they are on a mission, which we're not really sure what this mission actually is. But it seems to kind of involve the past. So maybe this is why that Legion of Superheroes flight ring appeared in Superman's kind of his, his Fortress of Solitude because... He found it in the past, maybe it was lost in some way when they went to the past, perhaps, which is really weird. I know in Superboy and or Superman and the Legion of Superheroes, we did have the Legion go back in time to seek the help of Superman, the one who actually kind of helped them form the or kind of kind of help them out in the future. So I think maybe that's what's happened. And it's kind of similar to that story, which I highly recommend reading Superman and the Legion of Superheroes because it is really, really good. So that's really cool. I'm not sure what this mission is and why they can't actually... It's quite interesting because they're from the future. They can't reveal what happened in the past because, well, they, would, they can't interfere. Also, interestingly, they have blocks. So a lot of the stuff in the history has been taken away. Although once Monel appeared, that was it. Everyone managed to kind of have their history or have their history spoken to them by Monel and a pretty sweet Bon Jovi song in the fight at the end there, which I thought was really awesome because I'm a big Bon Jovi fan myself. So really, really cool there. And I imagine we'll we'll unravel these mysteries as time actually goes by. So as the rest of the series goes on, we may learn a bit more about the future. So we all know about Winarth, which is a planet, and they explain some of these planets have fallen due to the blight, and the blight are kind of some sort of, I would say, sort of half technical, half bio-organic, well, a bio-organic thing or whatever. That's the best way to describe it. And they are a pretty significant enemy who actually faced the Legion of Superheroes, and it was the Legion of the, the Damned, I believe the comic was actually called, and they fought against each other, and the kind of way that these blight were stopped was by destroying their kind of method of travel, which was pretty cool. So we'll hopefully we'll learn more about this future at some point. I want to learn more. 
And they also mention Isla Rand, who in Isla Rand is Lightning Lass, who is the twin to Lightning Lad. So we haven't got Lightning Lad, which I was expecting Lightning Lad, although she does have a relationship with Saturn Girl in the future. So that's probably why we're going to be getting Lightning Lass. And she might be the next one we actually see coming from the pods. So there's a lot of pods on this ship, which I think is pretty cool. So we'll probably see quite a lot of those. And I have to say the Legion of Superheroes really have rejuvenated this show for me, in my opinion. I have enjoyed it, but it, it's been made better by these Legion mysteries. So the crux of this is pretty much Rain is going on to destroy Sinners. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, not sure how she's destroying these sinners because, well, she's evil, but she wants to destroy evil. So I guess she's more like a kind of religious zealot, I guess. Kind of like in Game of Thrones, we had the kind of the faith militant, that sort of thing, who have their rules about being good and evil. And really, you have to be completely virtuous, which is, I guess what Rain is getting at here and what these world killers actually want. They want to purge any sin which they see as, well, sin. So they have the fight, they have the fight again. Legion of Heroes decide to get involved, but for some reason, Brainiac takes the ship that has all of the sleeping Legion of Superheroes to fight a Kryptonian. What? That makes no sense. They put all of these people in danger. The ship looked a bit naff, but the fight was really cool. I think Saturn Girl's powers looked absolutely dope. And Monel fighting as well was really cool. I give prop I'm not a big Monel fan, but props where props are due, they they fought really well, even though this whole sundown protocol that was designed to actually kill Superman failed pretty miserably. So at the end, we of course hear that there are gonna be more world killers. So Rain has more people around her and we've also got someone from This Is Us, the TV show, who's been cast for Supergirl as someone on Earth who has hints towards Krypton. So possibly she is another one of the world killers. There were, I believe, six or seven. Doomsday was believed to be one of them. So we'll expect to see more of these world killers as we see the Legion of Superheroes expand so will all of these world killers. So we will see more of these. And it's cool seeing the guy who had the kind of the religion of Rao will led that cult. He's been now been released by Rain and he's now helping them. He has all that knowledge as well. So big, big thing for Supergirl. Absolutely fantastic episode. Apart from the Jimmy Olsen, Lena Luther storyline, which was just why? Just why have they even been talking about that kiss? But at least we had that funny thing with Supergirl when Martian Manhunter was actually pretended to be her, which I thought was really, really funny. So I really did like that. So we'll see more world killers. We're heading to Fort Ross next episode. I've got a previous video where I covered that leaked trailer for the next episode. Fort Ross, which I thought was in space at the moment, but it kind of goes from Earth into space. I'm not sure if that's kind of a clip from the last season. So that's really cool. We've also, also big news which just came in while I was watching the episode is the fact that the Omega Underground have revealed that they are casting Lois Lane for Supergirl. So we have a, an actress who is reading possibly the, the reading script that we had, is quite normal. We had that as well for kind of the, the Gwen Stacy for Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or Spider-Man 2, whatever it's going to be called. So Lois Lane could be coming to the show and she's talking about how what it's like meeting Supergirl about Superman. Now, not sure what's going on because she is actually a rival of Cat Grant. As well as this, she is also another reporter, which could lead to conflict with Kara as well because uh, not sure if they will bring and Lois Lane will know Kara's true identity or things like that. Will, will Clark reveal that to her? But Lois Lane is, by all intents and purposes, coming to the show. So big, big stuff there for the upcoming episodes. Now, that is it for this video. Please drop a like. Please do subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>